Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Cleon Cho. It's great to be here today and being a part of the creation team with uh, two excellent TED fellows. As you know, uh, TED has a fellowship program that every year selects individuals uh, of exception who are real change makers on the ground, rolling up the sleeves and doing some amazing work that have a potential to scale, support and, s and save a lot of people. And I, I think that it's, it's such an amazing uh, opportunity to be here with the two of them who are uh, just exemplary uh, TED Fellows, of course, and you saw many of them the rest of today as well. So uh, maybe let's jump into it. So Edsel, you are very much a, right now, uh, one of the special advisors to the Philippines government on infectious diseases, especially for HIV. You have a in really interesting story um, in a lot of the work you did. Um, tell us a little bit about that, but actually I would like you to start with one specific story if you don't mind sharing that. And in the time of um, uh, COVID, and as we talk about inspiring people to change and step up to make the difference, um, you actually brought a TED presentation to a a group of government, uh, government officials, right? Could you share with us what happened and how that all transpired and what happened after? Right, so um, in uh, March uh, of 2020, um, I was asked by the Philippine government to act as an advisor because of COVID. And at that time, we only had five cases, but we knew that the fifth case had actually had no travel and no, um, and no contact with any known case. So what that means is basically there's probably community transmission. And if you guys are familiar with the Philippines, you know, it's 110 million people, 7,400 islands. Manila is, a, Metro Manila is about 20 million people close packed. And I was seeing scenes of the apocalypse in my head. Yes. <laughs> but you know, so um, we told the Secretary of Health and he agreed, so with the cabinet, we. Um, the Secretary of Health did a very great presentation, you know, a, a, a doctor-type presentation, evidence-based, and not a single member of the cabinet aside from him is a doctor. So you know how that works, right? I mean, you can't even read your doctor's prescription, right? We're really bad communicators. I'm really sorry. But <laughs> the good thing was I had already been a TED Fellow, and the Secretary of Health knew that I had that training. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe serendipity, I had put together six slides on what to tell the cabinet um, and why we had to lock down when, when we were supposed to. And so the Secretary of Health says, because the cabinet was deadlocked, Ed's will go up there and, and, um, uh, and, and convince them. No pressure, right? <laughs> um, so I went up there and I thought, how am I going to make these people listen? And the training that we get from the TED Fellowship is that you have to make a very big opening statement. And of course, I'm a scientist. I'm an infectious disease doctor. First thing that comes to my mind is, I say, so I stand up there, there's 20 cabinet members and so many staff, about 200, 300 people in the room. And I say, every disaster movie starts with everyone ignoring a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, I'm a scientist, let's change the ending. And this room where everyone is milling around suddenly became very, very quiet. <laughs> and you know, so I had their undivided attention. You know, I had cabinet members looking at me like, what are you gonna do? And so I gave the slides. It was unprecedented. You know, he's locked down the airport, locked down everything because we didn't know. In Wuhan, that was the only thing that worked, right? And in Italy, they were taking people out of the houses who were already dead because they couldn't get to the emergency room. Now imagine the Philippines, we have maybe 10% of that healthcare capacity. And it was really, really scary. And so after that six slides, it was very, very quiet. And then the presidential spokesperson said, I vote that we adopt everything he said. <laughs> <laughs> so Edsel, um, yeah. What would happen, did, did they do a study, what would happen if they didn't listen to you? Right, so yeah, I mean, it was unanimous just to <laughs> finish the story, and we recommended it to the president. And so we were doing some um, comparisons, um, and uh, I'm sorry to beat up on Mexico, but Mexico is uh, similar, 160 million people, close-packed and everything, and they locked down 10 days after us. 
and we opened up at the same time June. So Mexico, after the first year, had 240,000 deaths. The Philippines had less than 10,000. So if we had waited every single day, because we know that there's an exponential thing. So a TED Talk saved 200,000 lives. So one of the biggest things that you talked about when we were having a conversation just now was the inspiration of why you wanted to be a TED Fellow and how that transformed. We, we see the effects here, right? But to talk about the transformation for you yourself as you went through the fellowship program. What was it like for you? How did you really hone down the message and realize this is how we just have to make the change? Because it's about convincing people, right? Right. So I work in the HIV space and, you know, there's a lot of stigma there and I had to learn a lot of tough lessons as well. But it was always very frustrating to communicate something to the media, and then they'd come out with something completely different. And so I needed to take ownership of my message. And so aside from learning how to do a TED Talk, you know, a one-hour lecture into four minutes and 36 seconds, that's my TED Talk. You can watch it if you want to. But the bottom line is, um, it's important to be cognizant of that. We're bad communicators. We got to get better. So, and that's what I did. And aside from the TED Talk and learning how to present and, you know, getting the cabinet, cabinet. to shut down, <laughs> um, you know, I started writing my own articles first as a freelance in Esquire. Now I have my weekly column in the biggest newspaper in the Philippines. So, you know, it really works out that you take ownership of your message and you can get it out there and affect as many people as possible. Thank you. So we, we have a couple of change makers in the room. We also have a lot of people that they are, inf uh, you know, the audience are able to speak to or know of. What would your message be to other change makers and your journeys? You know, what would that your t you want them to take home? You know, after what you've learned and you've gone through with the fellowship program. I come from a science background. I'm a doctor. Um, I'm a scientist as well, and I think that a lot of people understand that science is good, but there's a lot of fake news out there as well. So I think that the doctors have to take an active, um, you know, if you're a change maker, you want to make change, you got to get all the tools correctly. You know, it's not that I publish this many papers and everything. If I can't get that message out there, I only have 20 people reading my journal article. Who cares, right? But then if I post in Facebook and 150,000, 200,000 people read it, that's change. So I think you got to go get the tools that will make you communicate that that is as important as the message. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you know of anyone that you think should be stepping up, getting the message out there, you can go online, find out more about TED Fellows on the TED website. But for now, really a big thank you to all the TED Fellows for all the amazing work that all of you are doing. Just incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Thank you so much.